well hello and welcome to my latest video back in the workshop yes in the workshop um first of all what do you think of my haircut do you like it i went to i went to the barbers yesterday uh, i won't tell you which one but i went to my i went to the barbers i always go to and uh, uh, a guy said to me, a new fella, he said to me, what, what do you want? And I was like, I was a bit surprised. I said, well, I'd, I'd like a haircut, please. And uh, he said, what do you want? And I said, well, because I don't understand these things. I said, well, you know, short, but not too short, fairly short. I said, you decide. And he kind of looked at me, oh, fuck's sake. You know. Anyway, so he, he started cutting away, right? But he, he, he finished cutting away. And he sort of showed me this bit at the top. I said, can you make it a bit shorter? And he kind of looked at me. He said, well, you said fairly short. I said, yeah, but, yeah I, don't, I, I didn't think I did. And he said, well, I can't really because I was thinking, I need to do a fucking charge here. But anyway, he said, if I make that shorter, I've got to make this shorter, you see. And he said, whoever did your hair last time, I mean, they did it all wrong. It's rubbish. Mate, it's rubbish. He said they, they thinned it out far too much, and it's you know, like he, 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 he almost couldn't speak. He was that, he was that upset about it. And I said, well, made it done here, and he was like, well, it's still rubbish. And I was thinking afterwards, you know, that's probably fair point, isn't it? Because his point wasn't where did you have it done. His point was your haircut was rubbish. Uh, anyway, so what do you think? Leave a comment down below. If uh, you, you like my new my new hairstyle, and uh, anyway, so what are we doing today? Well, I thought I'd do something partly inspired uh, by my friend Stuart from Stew's Hikes and Rides. And if you haven't checked out his channel, check out his channel. Anyway, I'm going to do something that Stuart did, not because I'm copying him, but I'm just I just kind of felt like doing it anyway. And that is to do with some stuff. Hang on, I should have got I should have got prepared, but obviously uh, I don't normally. And that stuff is this. Shall I, shall, shall I hold it up? Shall I hold it up really? If I hold it up really close like that, that's really irritating, is it? Because you can't see it. Anyway, if I hold it up like that, this is muck off, no puncture, hassle, inner tube sealant. Okay? And what it is, um, it's, well, it's, it's, it's an inner tube sealant. So if you have tubeless tyres, you'll know what sealant is. Well, you can get, and you've probably been able to get this for a while, you can get sealant for uh, inner tubes. And uh, as it happened, I bought this stuff quite some time ago, but hadn't used it. And then Stu did a video where he did use it. And I thought, you know, what the hell, I've wasted money on this. I might as well try it out. So I'm going to show you um, sort of how it works. So we'll go over to, we'll go over to, to the bike stand and we'll get a closer look about what's going on. Okay, here is the bike that I decided to use the inner tube sealant on. And this is the Molten, Molten TSR30. And there's a video about this bike, although it isn't actually germane to this video to know which bike it is. It could have been any bike, uh, it could have been any, any of my, uh, any wheel, uh, any tire, any tube, but it just happened to be. I thought I'd try it out on the Molten. Now, the way it works is, is fairly straightforward, actually. Um, what you do with a, a Presto valve, the Presto valve here, uh, is you let the air out and you remove the valve core. All right? Now, I have actually put this sealant in, so I didn't do a kind of live video. This is like a kind of reconstruction of the video. So I won't actually do it, but I'll just show, it, show you what's involved. So let's imagine that we've let the air out of the uh, uh, tube and we've removed the valve core. Okay, you following that bit? Okay, we then take our uh, bottle of inner tube sealant and we remove this kind of applicator thing, uh, a, bit like a, a bit like a syringe, I suppose. Okay, so we've, re we've, we've drawn the syringe up, if you imagine it. We then fit the kind of syringe end, as it were, over the um, now valve core removed valve, okay, we'd remove this this stopper here. I'm not going to do that at the moment, otherwise the stuff will go everywhere. And we just uh, invert it, you see, so we turn it upside down like that, and gravity does its business, and most of the sealant goes into the tube, although some of it does kind of 
spill over the sides in a rather messy manner. We then we then remove. So if you imagine we 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 removed we. We've pulled that off like that. Imagine that I've pulled that off, and uh, I now press my applicator back in like that. Okay, and I can I can return the bottle to its storage location, which let's assume is over there. Okay, behind the bike. Can you see there it is? That's the storage location for the inner tube sealant, which is behind the bike. You might have a different uh, storage location. You're welcome to use that. You don't have to store yours behind the bike in the way that I've done. Uh, we then uh, return the valve core, um, put the, uh, uh, tighten up the valve, spin the wheel. Okay, so you can imagine I'm spinning the wheel. Imagine there's, a, there's like, a, like a little hamster. Um, I've, I've got a pet. Uh, pet hamster I call Boris. So if you imagine there's a there's a pet hamster in there and, it, and, it, and it's running round and round and round and round and round and it's spinning round and round and round and that is dispersing the sealant. Okay, it's dispersing the sealant. Not the hamster. The hamster stays in the same position, but it's disturb. It's dis um, it's uh, um, dispersing. All right, the sealant all throughout the tube. Okay, we imagine that done. Uh, we then uh, unscrew the valve. Not remove the valve core. Just unscrew the valve. We tighten up. Uh, sorry, we, we pump up the tyre with a normal pump, um, put the, uh, uh, tighten up the valve again, put the cap back on, and we're ready to ride. And so let's assume that that bit has already been done. Well, that bit has already been done because this wheel, and in fact the front wheel as well, of the Molten have both got sealant in the tubes. Okay, uh, back to me, Keith. Keith is my trusted assistant. So... There it is. The sealant is in the uh, tubes, in the molten, and yesterday, because I did it yesterday, uh, I went for a ride about 25 miles. And what do you know? I didn't get a puncture. Now, I have a problem, okay? I have a problem. Okay, let's say my, I did 25 miles, I didn't get a puncture, so let's say the sealant works. Well, that's, I mean, it doesn't work like that, does it? Life is not quite so simple. How do I know that the reason I didn't get a puncture is down to the sealant, or down to the fact that I just didn't get a puncture. Now, apart from the puncture that I had in Ireland, if you've watched my video about the end-to-end -end in Ireland, uh, I've not had a puncture, I think, for six months, right? And I haven't got sealant in any of the tyres, in any of the tubes, on any of the bikes that I've been riding over the course of the last six months. So let's say, right, I ride the molten for the next six months or six years or 600 years or whatever it is and I don't get a puncture. I am never going to know whether the reason I didn't get a puncture is because of the sealant or whether it's because I just didn't get a puncture. Now, if you've got tubeless tyres, you will know that you ride along and every now and again you, you, you get a kind of greenish ejaculation that comes out of your tyres. Well, I hope it comes out of your tyres. If it comes out of anywhere else, mate, you've got a problem. But let's say it comes out of your tyres. Well, you know, aha, uh -huh, I had a puncture. The sealant did it work. Did its work. I know this system works, okay? And that gives you a certain amount of confidence. I've not had a great deal of luck with tubeless tyres, but, you know, I have, I have used them. I have had punctures and the sealant has sealed them. So in that sense, it has worked. But when you've got sealant inside your inner tube, Right, you're never going to see that uh, sealant ejaculation, are you? Unless you watch certain other videos on YouTube, by. But you know, you're not going to see that sealant uh, spurt out of your inner tube because obviously it's hidden by the tire. And the only way you're going to be able to know that is if you, if you decide to take the tire off and check the inner tube to see if there was any sealant there. I mean, you're not going to do that. Why, why would you do that? So the other thing is that I was I was thinking about when you have a tubeless tire. Right, you have to top up the sealant after a while because it dries out. So what do you do with uh, uh, inner tube sealant? Do you, do you top it up as well? And in, the, and in the end, do you just end up with a tube that's got like 40 gallons uh, worth of discharged sealant uh, in, inside it? I mean, what happens to all that? That's, and if it dries out like the sealant does in a tubeless tyre, then what you're going to end up with is kind of crusty, rock-hard, inflexible uh, inner tube, which is going to totally fuck up your ride quality. Now, I may be, right, putting in too many negatives here, and I am well known 
uh, uh, for, for this, okay? I, I am known to be uh, a fairly negative kind of person. You might say, well, Jack Tillian, why don't you just look on the positives? You don't get a puncture, right? Then, then your life is sorted. And yes, okay, I agree. But I mean, this stuff isn't cheap. I can't remember how much it how much it was, but it's not cheap. And you put this stuff in your tires, maybe you get a puncture. Well, it, I mean, it doesn't say you're never going to get a puncture. I mean, the thing's not 100% guaranteed. It's not, you know, it's not, um, it's not like a thing that's 100% guaranteed. So if you get a puncture, it's like, well, you know, that's life. You know, I never thought I would never get a puncture. So that is my problem with the scene. Having said that, having said that, right, 25 miles, puncture-free on the Molten, who knows, I may be able to get hundreds more miles puncture-free on the Molten and it's all down to the muck-off in a tube sealant and they did not send me this for free. I bought this myself. Um, as, I can't remember, I, as I said, I can't quite remember. I'll, I'll look it up if you can't be asked. That's why you, you shouldn't do your own work. You can't expect to have everything done for you on YouTube. You know, this isn't like, this isn't like you know, Julian's YouTube channel is not the welfare state. Can I just make that point? Okay, I'm not, I'm not Clement Attlee. I'm not Lloyd George. Okay, I'm not here to, you know, to provide you with loads of benefits. I'm not a kind of walking Wikipedia. You've got to do a bit of work for yourself, guys, right? So if you've got to Google or go on Wiggle or your local bike shop or whatever it is and find out how much a bottle of inner tube sealant is, then go ahead. And by the way, when you find out, leave a comment down below. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. And um, I really like the haircut. You like the haircut. And uh, see you next time.